In my previous video, I worked with the first derivative test exclusively where we found intervals of increasing and decreasing and were able to find the maximums and the minimums on that function. Well, sometimes we need to also use the second derivative so that we can find uh, concavity information, regions or intervals where it's concave up or concave down. So we're going to look at this crazy fourth degree function here exclusively. This will be the one question I do on this video, so stick around for the whole thing so you can see the analysis there at the end. Uh, we're going to take the first derivative, we're going to take the second derivative, we're going to do sign charts, and we're going to, in the end, answer the question uh, that you see here, all the extreme increasing, decreasing intervals as well as concavity. So let's jump in and look at that first derivative. So if this is a simple polynomial, so we'll just do the power rule throughout. So the first derivative will be x to the third plus 2x squared minus 16x minus 32. And eventually we'll do the second derivative, but let's just hang tight and do our sign chart and everything on the first derivative at this point. Now, Often we might go to Desmos and we might look at that third degree function and see where the zeros are because remember we're going to set it equal to zero um, is the idea here so that we can find those critical values. Um, I actually set this up so that it factors nicely. So I think I'm going to do the grouping method here as you'll see. Uh, whenever you have four terms, you can always look for this grouping method because it might do the trick. If you factor out a 16 here, you get x plus 2. Well, look at that. This thing factors into um, x squared minus 16 times x plus 2. And this, of course, is x plus 4 x minus 4, and I have tons of factoring videos on my channel, so if you need some help, I will link those below on how to factor. Uh, so there we have all the factors, and I've set it equal to 0, so we know that the critical points are x equals plus or minus 4, and also x equals negative 2. So let's go ahead and set up our sign chart. Those are our critical values. We've got three of them, so this is the way I like to do it. Teachers... Uh, often teach this a bit differently, but I like to put the smallest number here, then the next smallest, and then the biggest number here, so that I can write out my intervals. Negative infinity all the way up to negative 4, and then from negative 4 to negative 2, and then from negative 2 to 4, and then from 4 to infinity. And we need to look at the sign on this first derivative using these values here. So for example, let's imagine plugging negative bazillion in there, a really big number. This term will be so big and negative that it will overwhelm these guys. So our first derivative will be negative there. On the other end of the spectrum, we have positive infinity, and that will cause this to be hugely positive and will overwhelm all of these. So uh, this will be positive in this region. We try to pick nice, easy numbers to plug in at this point. So we need to pick a value, for example, on this interval. I see that 0 is in that interval. So if we plug 0 in here, it cancels all of those, and it leaves us negative 32. So this would be negative here. Um, on this middle region is probably our most challenging one that we have to do. We need to plug negative 3 in there. Negative 3 is on that region. So if we plug negative 3 into this, let's go ahead and do that. So I'll, pr I'll do it off to the side here. We're going to find the first derivative with negative 3. Let's see, that would be negative 27 plus 18 plus 48 minus 32. Well, let's see how this comes out. So we've got a bunch of negatives. We've got negative 59. I'm doing this without a calculator, so I'm going to... Uh, 58, 66. Oh, that's positive, isn't it? It's a positive number. It's positive 7. So we have a positive here. So what does this tell us about the original function f? So this means that f of x is decreasing on this interval that I... See, I wrote the interval out, so that's kind of nice. So it's decreasing on that interval, and then it's increasing. That original function f of x is increasing on that next one, and then it's decreasing again, and then it's increasing at the very end. And I'll show you the graph of f of x here at the end. I don't want to give things away, so I'll show you the graph here at the end. 
look at this. We've identified if you're de decreasing and increasing. This is a local min. So we have a local min at x equals negative 4, but also another one at positive 4. So it's at plus or minus 4 because when you change from decreasing to increasing, uh, you have a min. Now when you change from increasing to decreasing, that's a local max. So we have a max at x equals, um, that would be x equals negative 2. We're going to confirm this with concavity here before the end of the problem, but uh, let's go ahead and get that written down. Okay, at this point, you're ready to do the second derivative. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra room here. So let's do the second derivative. The second derivative would be, and again, I'm looking right up here, and I'm going down here, and I'm going to do the second derivative. So 3x squared plus 4x minus 16. Well, that's kind of a crazy uh, polynomial. Uh, you might try to reverse foil that, uh, maybe with completing the square stuff, but it doesn't cleanly, um, it doesn't, it does not cleanly factor. So often, if this were on the AP exam and you weren't allowed to use your calculator, well, then you got to go to the quadratic formula. So that would be, the answers are, the zeros would be, right, because we're setting it equal to zero, by the way, the zeros would be the opposite of b plus or minus giant square root of b squared minus 4ac. So that is minus 4 times 3 times 16. So that would be 48 times 4, and that's 192. So plus 192. Why is it plus? Remember, it was negative 4 times 3 times negative 16. And I have a good video on the quadratic formula, so I'll be sure to link that also below if you need some help with the quadratic formula. All over 2 times a, so all over 6. So this is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 208 all over 6. Now, if you plug this in the calculator, what you get is negative 3.07 and 1.737, and here, take a look at the graph that I put in, into Desmos. You can see where the zeros are on that second derivative. So that's another way that you can determine those decimals. Okay, at this point, we will set up our second derivative sign chart. So our second derivative sign chart would look like this. At negative 3.07 and 1.737. And we will look at the second derivative this time on these intervals. So you would write your intervals in here, negative infinity all the way up to here. And then between these two numbers, and then all the way to infinity and beyond, right? Okay, let's do our sign test. And again, we're looking right here. We're looking right here. Now, if you plug a negative or a positive in here and you square it, you get a positive, and that will win. So this will be positive, this will be positive. And then if you plug zero in, because zero is on this interval, you can plug zero in here. And what do you get? You get negative 16. That's a negative. So what, this, what does this tell you about f of x? It's concave up like a cup there and then concave down here, and then concave up here, because when the second derivative is positive, the original function is concave up, and when the second derivative is negative on those intervals, the original function is concave down. So we've now answered the question about when is concave up and down. Let's go back to here where we had minimums and maximums. At four and negative four, we thought we had a min, and that would make sense because we are concave up. So think about it. If we're concave up, we have a min. If we're concave up, we have a min, which is exactly what we confirmed here with the first derivative. But we doubly confirmed it with the second derivative. And what about this max? At negative 2, at negative 2, that would be in this region here. And we are concave down, so we have a portion of the graph that looks like this. So we would have a max 
there. So that's a great way to confirm it is with that second derivative. Now let's take a look at the, the original function uh, graphed on Desmos. You can see this fourth degree function. It does have a min, a max, and another min at the values that we said, negative four, negative two, and positive four. Uh, and then what about this concavity stuff? Negative 3.07, there was a change, and that's right here. You see how we're concave up, and then we're concave down. And then we discovered down here at 1.737, which would be about right here, we changed concavity. We're concave down, and then we're concave up. And sure enough, that's what's going on here. Uh, so it really looks like we did a pretty decent job with identifying all the concavity. You see how this thing is decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, just as we found in this table. Now, often on the AP exam, you would want to actually write out your description. So you would say, for example, f of x is increasing on the intervals, and then you would list the intervals since, and you have to put your reasoning there, folks, since f prime is greater than zero, that would be when it's increasing. And then you would also state where the, the intervals where f prime is negative, and those would be the regions where it's decreasing, of course. But you, on the AP exam, you really need to spell out how you know that the function is increasing, because these sign charts are not answers unto themselves. Okay, so you, you have to give your answers, but also give your reasoning in a nice sentence. All right, well, hopefully this helped you with that first derivative and the second derivative test and how to really tear apart a function and understand what it looks like and what's going on with it. All right, good luck and until next time.